Hi guys, welcome to Log Cabin Gaming and today we are going to do a video that's been living in my head for, for quite some time and that is a beginner's guide to airbrushing um, and the reason why I wanted to do this is because I've recently, only very recently, have got started in airbrushing and uh, there's a lot of information out there and a lot of it is done by people who are experienced with airbrushing so I thought it'd be nice to see how a beginner kind of feels uh, starting to it. I only started, um, I think maybe six, eight months ago. Um, and hardly any of that time has been used to airbrush. Uh, and then I'm getting kind of questions from my brother and friends who also want to start airbrushing. So I thought it'd be a good time to, uh, to do a video just to kind of give you my views and my experiences on uh, how I kind of got into airbrushing, what I use it for, what the pitfalls are, what you know, what's easy, what's to be afraid of, what's not to be afraid of, all, all that kind of stuff that's going through your head. Uh, what equipment do you need? Uh, financial investment, all that kind of stuff. Hopefully, we'll cover in this video. And what I'll do is I'll section it out um, in the description. So if you're watching this video multiple times, you can just jump to the bit because I think there'll be a lot of information here today. So you could just jump into the bits that you want to uh, get a recap on. So first thing, why get an airbrush? Um, the reason why I got an airbrush um, was purely that the thing that pushed me over the edge um, to, to force myself to get one was Curse City. <laughs> uh, I really wanted the box set, <clears throat> but I didn't want to paint hordes and hordes of models. I thought, oh, okay, you know, uh, I even contemplated <laughs> Uh, getting a um, commission painter to do it and that would have just been a fortune because there's so many good models in there. So I thought, well, the bit in between is going to be an airbrush. I could just use it to do base coats. Um, as you'll see, I'll show you some of the models later. I ended up just rattling through them by doing a kind of like a glow effect. So it covers most of the model. So you don't even have to worry about painting half the model and it just really cut down the time. Moving on to concerns about getting an airbrush. So when I first started, I had these kind of concerns. In retrospect, they're kind of nuts, but it's like, oh, I'm gonna ruin my model. You know, <laughs> what's gonna happen, blah, blah, blah. Um, which is just ridiculous. You're not gonna ruin the model. And even if you did, I don't know how you do it, but what is the actual worst that can happen? Even if you pick the most expensive model um, that you can buy, which is, I don't know, a few hundred quid, that's all you've lost, a few hundred quid. The odds are you're not gonna start on that. Um, you can start on something small, cheap and cheerful. What I did was I um, picked up just a couple of uh, cheap common miniatures that you can get on eBay for a few quid to practice on. Um, you know, practice your zenithals, practice your base coats. Um, and then always, because we're using um, Flow Improver, or I use Flow Improver in my um, mixes the paint isn't going to dry as soon as it touches the model so just have a, a wet brush <clears throat> and some water nearby just in case you've got you know it comes on a bit weird speckled or whatever you could just wipe it off wait for it to dry and start again so that's that taken care of then the other thing is yes the financial aspect if you go down the rabbit hole can start to add up what if you hate the experience what if airbrushing is not for you what I did first is I got one of those portable battery powered airbrushes that you kind of see on Amazon or on Facebook being advertised, 30 or 40 quid. Uh, they have the compressor built into them and you've got, you know, not a bad airbrush to start off with. Um, and then that's kind of your, your test investment, 30, 40 pounds. You can start doing some airbrush, you can start doing some base coats and just see if you get the hang of it. You know, do you like it? Do you like the effect you like the experience is cleaning the airbrush as, as horrendous as you kind of think it's going to be uh, spoiler alert it's not it's not it gets quicker it gets much quicker over time 
Uh, we'll go through um, cleaning the airbrush later. But yeah, uh, cleaning the airbrush isn't an issue um, in the long term. Once you've kind of done it a few times, you will rapidly get through it. And that's hopefully what this video is about. It's gonna show you the mistakes that I made or the bits that we can shortcut so you've got a truly fun experience um, doing your airbrush. So yeah, I would recommend that if you're on the fence, get a 30, 40 quid um, compressed one you know, the battery powered one, you can muck about with it. Um, and then if you like it, you can either uh, sell it on or keep it as a spare because the airbrush isn't too bad, the one that you get with it. Um, getting an airbrush is a financial investment for sure. Um, and it's down to you where you want to put your money. Personally, I put my money into getting a more expensive compressor than an airbrush because I think you're going to change your airbrush throughout your uh, kind of hobbying career as it were but you're very seldom I would have thought are going to change your compressor so if you can uh, try and get the best compressor you can for, for your money and uh, hopefully you'll, you'll never have to change it with airbrushes you are going to go through they might break uh, uh, you might not like it etc etc so I put my money into the compressor um, and I also got a decent airbrush I got a kit um, from where did I get my kit from it's like it's a, it's, it's a company with two names um, but I'll, I'll put all the details in for you other equipment you'll need uh, is you're gonna need a Depending on where you live, um, cause, you know, I don't know where you live. You might live in an apartment block, uh, out on a farm, wherever, but you're gonna need to do something about the spray. So the way the airbrush works is it atomizes the paint, mixes it with air, and then obviously you end up inhaling the air. And so what we're trying to do is we're trying to mitigate you inhaling paint air. <laughs> you don't want that in your lungs. So bare minimum, I would say is use a mask, a face mask, a respiratory mask that you can pick up from a uh, DIY store, uh, relatively cheap. What I ended up doing is I got one of those paint boxes uh, that sometimes you see on, um, on other YouTubers channels when they're painting and it has uh, an extraction uh, thing at the back. Uh, and I'm kind of lucky in this cabin that I've got windows around. So every time I paint. <laughs> I set up my station right next to a window so I just chuck the hose out of the window, turn it on and then I'm good to go. And because I'm quite lazy I leave it set up permanently. I don't want to kind of have an impulse deflated of me wanting to paint and having to get everything set up so I've, I've, put a, I've been lucky, fortunate enough to have a dedicated space where I could just leave it permanently set up um, and then when the when the urge takes me, I just pop the hose out the window, turn it on and I'm ready to go. Other things are going to be good is going to be the airbrush holder and uh, this kind of comes in, uh, you can get them, they're relatively cheap, it's got like a glass bowl uh, and that's where you can kind of eject your used paint into in between colour cleans. Uh, that's always really good to have and when you're not using it to clean, um, it just holds the airbrush. It also comes with a couple of filters. You'll see um, when you're ejecting uh, either paint or airbrush thinner or cleaner um, through it, you'll see uh, the filters working and kind of the fumes rising up. So they're always really good to have. Uh, these things are good. Um, they're very useful to have. They're just, uh, I don't know what you'd call them, swan neck bottles, pick them up for a couple of quid. Um, I just use it to, to keep clean water in and then I can use the nozzle to, to, to direct water into the cup when I'm doing my colour clean or when I'm uh, cleaning the airbrush at the end of, of, of a session. They're really good uh, to have. Uh, an assortment of various chemicals, airbrush flow improver and airbrush cleaner. Now what you'll find is I haven't got airbrush thinner and you might be surprised by that, but I'll uh, come on to that later. I have got airbrush thinner, I just never use it um, and I will explain why a bit later on in this video. It's not essential, but um, 
Big box of Q-tips are good, just in case you, you get a bit of needle block. Um, you can just wipe that off. Um, you don't really need them, I'm, but I just happened to have it when I started out. I use them less and less now, but it's still good to have on your desk. I think that's it. So uh, yeah, let's have a look at the airbrush and the compressor. Right, so now that we've seen the equipment, let's actually fire up the compressor and airbrush and uh, see what's what. So this is my Sparmax compressor. There's a switch at the back on off, which is actually the most annoying bit. I'd rather it be at the front, but can't have anything. Can't have everything. And what you'll see, you'll see the pressure gauge go up. Um, what have we got it on? Oh, I've got it about 30. Okay. Uh, 30 PSI, so that seems to be fine. You can obviously change it. You can either increase it or decrease it. So you've got this unit here. If we wanted to increase it, we pull it up, turn it, and push it back. And we should see that start to increase. Okay, and then if we wanted to take it down, and just do the reverse. Obviously it won't release the pressure until we get our airbrush and that should equalize back down to 30. So we'll leave it at 30 for now. Okay. Uh, yeah. And that's pretty much what we do to get started. So we've got our airbrush here in the cup holder, which is very useful. One thing I didn't include in the kit list that is quite useful to have, see if I can do this with one hand, there, is this valve. What that does Sorry, it's this valve here. It's a lock valve, and what it does is it goes in between the hose and the airbrush, and if you take your airbrush off, what it doesn't do is it doesn't release all the air out of your tank. Now, what you'll hear is this is silent uh, because it stores all the air in the tank, and then as you use it, um, it uses it out the tank, and then every so often when the pressure gets low, it will, you'll hear it fire up and put more air in the tank. So if we take this off, what we'll hear you'll see the pressure going down and it's trying to kick back in. Okay, so these things are quite useful to get. A couple of quid. Um, and what it just means, just wait for the compressor to stop pumping back up to 30 or so. What it means is you can then take off your airbrush without losing all the air in it. So once we're happy with the, um, uh, the compressor, just going to take some flow improver and I'm just going to pour it into the empty cup just there and if you can see that it's not that much and all I'm going to do is I'm going to run that through the airbrush so you push down it's a double action this one so you push down for the air and then pull back to let your medium come through You see that? There you go. Might do that again. There. 
Right, those bubbles there. Now this took me ages to work out. Well, that probably means I'm gonna take the um, the guard off. That bubble probably means this is not uh, as tight as it could be. So just given the needle bit, the point at the end, just a bit of a nip. It didn't feel like it moved anywhere. But now we've got no more bubbles. Yeah. If this is running, the flow improver through. Right now that we're happy with the um, airbrush, and we've we kind of put a generous coat of flow improver around the needle, we're going to take our first colour. So this section. Here, we're going to do a few colours just so I could show you colour changing and cleaning in between. So we're going to do a first colour which will be a white. We'll start off with a nice zenithal highlight. I've got some primed space marines for uh, using as test models for a project which you might get to see about later. So do you remember earlier I said I don't use um, airbrush thinner what I found is flow improver works much better especially if you're using the Citadel range um, you just get such a nice coat um, using the uh, flow improver so generally I'll do 50 50 paint to flow improver but because we're using an ink you don't need to thin down the ink but I just put a dash about 10% in let's get this up I do about 10% um, flow improver. That might be a bit too much. Split some out. Um, flow improver to ink. And what that does is it just takes the, the gloss sheen off the ink. Um, so the ink I've got here is the Liquitex acrylic ink, uh, white, titanium white. Uh, let us just put a few drops in here. A bit more in. So you're really just kind of showing it just a bit of the... Um, flow improver, there we go, that should do. Now what I'm going to do, I take a, a rubber tip brush or silicon tip brush and just mix it in the cup. Uh, never do a backflow because what that will do is it will push all the paint back down the needle into the bottom of the brush and it's just going to make cleaning a nightmare. There's no need to do it. You can just mix it here. There we go. Now that it's mixed, we can just do a little test. So that's what I've kind of lined all my um, box here with brown paper so I can spray all over it. And I've also keep this little guy here as a test model. Poor guy. He gets um, sprayed with everything. So I know you can kind of practice with um, kind of airbrushing videos teach you to practice on paper. Um, I've never really got on with that personally. Your final medium, if you're a miniature painter, is not gonna be paint, uh, it's not gonna be paper, it's gonna be minis. So just get, you know, you can pick up free ones or a couple of quid from your local games workshop or wherever. They're just always giving these stuff away. So I've just got one, put it on a cork. Um, and we are now, just going to test the consistency of our ink. Like I said, ink is generally, people tend to use ink because it's ready to go straight out of the, the pot, but I just add a bit of flow improver in it to, um, to take the gloss sheen of it. I'll turn this on, it's going to get a bit loud. Now what an airbrush has, these general ones are their dual action. So, 
push it down and the air will come out pull it back and paint comes out so you have to push down and pull back and also before you hit the model I always do a test spray just in case there's any clumps on there so let's try and zoom this in blow air first before I release the paint through and just gradually I'm going to let the paint come out and I might hit the cork first nothing's come in there we go too much there we go there's nice coverage just slow and I'm always moving the airbrush just to move it away. They do tell you to kind of see this kind of action with the more proficient um, painters, but I'm not there yet, so that's why I move my airbrush away uh, to let the paint off it. So now that I'm happy with that, I'm going to get my actual test model. I'm going to put some gloves on for this one second. Not my glove, again, you don't need to do this, but I'm just going to do a zenithal highlight on this guy from above. You see, so I push the air and uh, it spat out of it. That's what we don't want to do. We want to push the air away, okay, from the model. And then when you're happy, you start releasing the paint. Wipe that off, okay? Clean up the 
needle and that's what's going to cause a um, paint blockage or a blob of paint to come out uh, and hit the mini which is why I always fire away first because if there is a blockage and it blows out it goes up, it doesn't hit on miniature. I'm just strengthening the tops now because that's where the light is going to hit the most. Alright, so that's our marines done. Very nice um, kind of effect coming through. So I'm going to try something different now and so I'm going to need a different colour and what I'm going to do, we're going to clean the airbrush. So, let's see if we can see this. Uh, normally what I do is I'll take that off and just dip the contents of the cup. So I empty the contents of the cup into there. but. Here, we're just for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to empty it that way into the cup. Remember my swan neck bottle? Tip that in here. And then again, run that through. I don't know if you can see, but fumes are kind of coming out of here which is um, why well, it's nice to have the, the filter on there so that's gone through <clears throat> gonna get a tissue now gonna get gonna get a tissue just wipe away the cup nice and clean you don't have to, but I'm just going to run a bit more water through it. See, it's still a bit chalky white, but that's fine. Run that through. Yeah, you can see the needle is kind of getting clean. We haven't even done any cleaner yet, so. I'm gonna get some airbrush cleaner. Fill that up. Now this is where I will do a backflow because it doesn't matter if the cleaner goes back because it's cleaner. So I'm gonna hold the tip of the needle, block the holes and we just get that so that it bowls back. That should mix back nicely and then we're gonna clean that through. Now you can see the fumes coming through. There we go. We're ready to accept our next colour. Because we're going to be doing a, um, a yellow scheme, I've always wanted to try the pink on yellow thing. So I've got Screamer Pink here. I'm going to shake it. If you've got one of these vortex mixers, you can do that. Give it a good mix. And I'm gonna get my flow improver. Careful you don't confuse it with your airbrush, airbrush cleaner. Now remember that I said roughly about 50-50, cause I'm only doing one marine. I'm not gonna have too much. So. Show you how much is in there. Not that much, just at the bottom. Then I'm gonna add the same of Screamer Pink. It's roughly okay. Can you guys see that okay? Okay. No blowback. I'm gonna get my silicon brush and just mix it, okay? Now, like I said, this method works really well for Citadel paints. I tried it with Vallejo and it came out very spottled and mottled, so um, this is just what I found. If you're using Citadel, I really prefer 
using Flow Improver, you get such a nice smooth coat from it. So now that we've done that, we're gonna get our test model again. Put him in here and turn the extraction on and just do a few test sprays. We're just going to eject all the paint that we don't want in there. Then that's out. Pour some water in. still see a bit of pink in there but it doesn't matter we can put some airbrush cleaner in blow back See, there's still a bit, I don't know if you can make that out, there's still a few pink flecks in there. So I'm just going to put some more water in. There we go. Okay. Just going to test, blow out, make sure nothing pink comes out. Seems fine. And ready for our next colour will now be a <clears throat> yellow ink. I'm going to give this a good shake. Right, again, I'm going to get some flow improver. Remember about 10%. Just to take the, the gloss sheen off it. It's a very good shake. Now, some yellow ink in there. Oh, that is yellow, isn't it? Oh, I'm very nervous. Not done this before. You could probably use um, 
contrast paint. Uh, I think it's ironed in yellow. All right, let's give that a mix with our silicon brush. Remember, no blowback. Okay, let's fire it in here. See if we get a nice spray come out. There's the pink, it's on the end of the tip. There we go, and now we're yellow. Okay. I can already start to smell those fuse, and put my fan on. We go our old uh, faithful here. Let's see how that looks. It smells of the first. Oh yeah, that's nice. So same thing as before, now that we're doing the final clean of the day, that's all the painting we're gonna do. I'm gonna take my brush, just tip all the paint in there. That's the quick way of doing it. Screw this back up. Remember, put some water in. Okay, I'm going to, just going to do this a few more times because we're at the end of the day now. Here, obviously, what we, we can do now is we can take the needle out. So my one unscrews here. You can see there's a little bit of 
paint, not too much because we didn't blow anything back. So it's only really here that we need to clean. So I'm gonna get a bit of tissue paper. some cleaner on it and just do that there we go put that to one side this is the nice bit now I can take disconnect the hose give everything else a wipe so take apart the the nozzle here so I normally keep a little shot glass to hand to put all these bits in again more water in just gonna put my needle tip and cap in there whilst I work on just cleaning this out okay going to do because the needle's gone out all that's going to do that's just going to flush straight through now which is what we want and take this out it's good to get it now whilst all the paint's wet give that a nice wipe there we go there's no paint on that he's done now one of the advantages of these harder and steenbeck things is you got all these O-rings, which are nylon. So if you wanted to, you could put this unit into uh, one of those jewelry ultrasonic cleaners if you wanted to. I do have one. I'm not going to go into it. I don't do it after everything. Maybe every three or four uses, I'll chuck them into an ultrasonic cleaner. Uh, again, you can get a Q-tip. Put a bit of airbrush cleaner on it. You can just poke it down there, the hard bits to get. You can see it's coming out yellow. But you just want to put this into every nook and cranny, every orifice. And then just flush it through with water. Clean Q-tip and they're just going to keep doing this until no real paint comes off anymore. We're nearly there. And so that's done. Check on our needle and nozzle. Again, just put a Q-tip through. Give it a blow. Don't know if the camera's going to pick this up. You can see right through it. So that's done. Just give it a visual inspection. Any paint in there? Shove your Q-tip in and try and get as much out as possible. Again, you could just put a few drops of airbrush cleaner through it. And the nozzle. Make sure that's clean. Okay. 
Can we see through that? Yes. That's all good. You could, again, just gently poke your needle through there. Give it a twist, but you should visually be able to see if there's any paint flecks in there. And then all we need to do now is reassemble the brush. And unfortunately, it's something I can't teach you. You're just going to have to learn how to do that. Take these gloves off now. Yep, springs nicely. Put the needle guard back on. And then clip this back on. That's it, just to test, I'm just going to blow some more, just water through it. Yeah, there's no bubbles coming through. There we go, done, and that is ready for next time. Now that we're finished with our airbrush, we just have to remember to turn the compressor off, switch at the back, and underneath on this one, uh, it's in the manual, it in encourages you to open the air and let all the pressure out. Turn that back up. On this one, it does have a water trap. Um, in case any water gets in, we're just gonna. No, no thing in there, it's pretty good. And that is our compressor and airbrush back ready for another time. And this is what we've done. So we've zenithed our Marines and we've done a, a test Imperial Fist. Now we've got the nice kind of gradient underneath. It's a bit yellow for my liking, but that's not bad for a, a test model. So I will probably muck about and try and make that a bit darker by adding more battle damage, a bit maybe um, going through and doing an Agrax Earthshade wash on it. But that's not bad for a kind of first attempt. I don't know, I don't paint many Space Marines, so watch this space to see how he turns out it's a little glossy at the minute maybe i didn't add enough um flow improver but that's not too bad uh once he gets varnished he'll be okay so we'll see whether i continue on and uh, have another test model but that's the beauty about these things they're very cheap and cheerful you can buy them on ebay for a few quid and you can just uh, play around them, uh, play around with them till your heart's content. Well, sadly, that's the end of the video, guys. Um, unfortunately, uh, time got away from us, and there was so much more stuff that I wanted to talk about that we haven't had time uh, to do it. So hopefully, uh, you got something out of this, and you never know, there may be a, a second follow-up video to this. But uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoy your. Uh, progression with the airbrush so just to kind of go over a few of the main points just have fun with it uh, the airbrush is a time-saving tool it's not going to miraculously kind of uh, make you a better painter um, in in the ways that you know you're not suddenly going to go from normal to like Michelangelo painting the Sistine Chapel but it is a tool and uh, 
as with tools, you'll learn to use it and you'll kind of start to get an understanding of your painting, of your colours, so you will improve. But it is a tool at the end of the day, so um, it's very good for certain things. Um, it's very good for batch painting, very good for, for base coats. Uh, and as you get more advanced, as I get more advanced, we'll be able to do more and more details with it, you know, um, highlights and, and stuff. So hopefully I'm looking forward to getting to that level. So yeah, uh, hopefully you've had fun. Remember to experiment. I can only show you a few things. Other YouTubers can only show you a few things. Um, ultimately, it's going to be down to you to uh, to muck about with it and learn at your own pace and at your own level. And obviously, as you make mistakes, you'll you'll learn to understand. If there's a few things I would kind of say to take away from this video is one: always blow away from the mini on your on your initial burst. Before you start just in case there's a little blockage uh, you don't want it to fire out uh, a blob of dried paint on there number two the useful thing that i found i couldn't find anywhere was the um twisting uh, to make sure your needle cap is super tight otherwise it looks like you get bubbles coming back which are uh, it's the same kind of effect as if you've got a blockage on your needle and you'll spend hours trying to clean it and nothing will happen. So just make sure that that's super tight. And um, other thing is, yeah, by all means, spray practice on a bit of paper. But because you're going to be painting minis, uh, make sure you start practicing on minis as soon as possible. And I think that's it for today, guys. So uh, thanks for coming along. Thanks for watching. Um, if you enjoyed the video, please leave me a comment. Um, if, if there's something that I didn't cover, I'm happy to answer any questions. So just, yeah, type any comments in. I will read and answer all of them. Um, but other than that, welcome to the airbrushing club. So hopefully I'll see you guys on the next one. And those of you wondering what happened to my test mini, let's just have a quick look before we go. And that's the first Space Marine I've painted since the 90s. So, how did I feel? Yeah, I think it came out okay. Um, there's obviously things I'd improved. The shadows came out okay, and I managed to get that dirty, grimy Space Hulk kind of feel to the Marine. I tried a bit of um, uh, battle damage. Uh, some of it worked, some of it didn't. Um, but again, it's all experimentation. Um, but yeah, reasonably happy with how he came out. Transfers, again, uh, were as annoying as they were back in the 90s. I don't think anything has improved there. Um, I think if I was to do it again, there'd be lots of different things to improve on. Um, obviously, if I was painting an army of these guys, I'd have another 29, 39, 49 more miniatures to, to practice with. Um, but that's, that's what it's all about. It's all about pushing your comfort boundaries and uh, enjoying the process as you get better and better. I hope you guys enjoyed this little video. Um, I hope it's gonna help you improve uh, or even start airbrushing and um, we'll see you guys on the next one. Cheers.